age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you age to age. As the eagle flies to the heavens above, on wings of faith, God will bear you all. Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you age to age. As the lilies of the field neither toil nor spin, what splendor! Age to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you age to age. Come all you weary, for you are blessed. God will lighten your to age, we will love you. Dawning light, we will wake with you. Into night, we will follow you. We will love you age to age. King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fills me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome. I also welcome those who are viewing this Mass via live, live via uh, live stream. It is great to have you here with us today. We appreciate your patience and your cooperation in these unusual circumstances. At the time of communion, and at the time of departure from the building, you will receive directions from our seating ambassadors. And also at the sign of peace, you are welcome to exchange a nod or a wave while, of course, maintaining the proper distance. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our minds and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb, on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself, will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In order to put the Gospel reading into its proper context, we must first look at today's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Old Testament and the New Testament need to be read together as each sheds light on the other. The Old Testament foretells the new and the New Testament fulfills the old. So let's take a look at our first reading. The significance of this passage from the book of Deuteronomy can be e easily overlooked by us, but it certainly would not have been overlooked by a first century Jew the time of Jesus. The book of Deuteronomy is the fifth book in the Bible, and together with the first four, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, make up the five books of Moses, called the Torah in Hebrew, or the Pentateuch in Greek. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses summarizes much of the law that is detailed in Exodus and Leviticus. The law that begins with the Ten Commandments, which Moses received from God and brought down Mount Sinai to the Israelites. Following the instructions of God, Moses had led the people of Israel out of their slavery in Egypt. He had been their leader and their go-between with God for 40 years in the desert, speaking face to face with God on their behalf. Now in the book of Deuteronomy, 
Moses is speaking to the people of Israel before they enter into the promised land. God has told Moses that Moses will die before the Israelites enter the promised land. So the book of Deuteronomy is, in many ways, Moses' final instructions to the people that he has been leading for 40 years. Moses tells the Israelites that the Lord God will raise up from among the people of Israel a new prophet like Moses himself. God will put his own words into the mouth of this new prophet. And this new prophet will tell them all that God commands of his people, and they will listen to him. Moses is the most important person in the history of the Old Testament. Yet the message from God that he is relaying to the people of Israel is that God will raise up a new prophet who will speak the very words of God. <laughs> and, it is, and it is this new prophet to whom the people of Israel must listen. As uniquely great as Moses' was, able to speak with God face to face, there is someone even greater who is to come. With that as context, now let's look at the gospel today. We are in the first chapter of Mark's account of the gospel. Jesus has begun his public ministry by choosing his 12 apostles. He is now in the synagogue, and like any man conversant in Jewish scripture, he is invited to comment on the readings. Mark doesn't indicate in any way the content of Jesus' teaching, only the reaction of the people, astonishment. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were scripture scholars, experts in scripture, but Jesus taught not like the scribes, but like one with authority. The word authority comes from the same word as author. Both words come from the root, meaning to originate, to create. So someone who originates a work is the author of that work, and therefore has authority over it. The people are astonished at Jesus' teaching because he teaches with authority. In other words, he teaches the scriptures, the word of God, as its author, its origin, as the one from whom the word of God comes. Jesus immediately follows his teaching with an exorcism, the exorcism of an unclean spirit from a possessed man in the synagogue. The unclean spirit knows who Jesus is, the Holy One of God. Jesus commands the unclean spirit, and it obeys him. The spirit obeys Jesus because Jesus has authority over it. Jesus did not call upon God in order to exorcise the unclean spirit but exercise the unclean spirit by his own authority. Jesus has authority over the unclean spirit in the same way that he has authority over everything in creation, because he is the author of creation. The people in the synagogue immediately recognize the connection between his teaching and his power to dispel evil. Both are by his own authority. They ask with amazement, what is this? A new teaching with authority. The teaching is, not, is new not because it has never been heard before, but because it has the power to accomplish what it communicates, the power to free us from evil, as Jesus demonstrates by exercising the unclean spirit. Jesus teaches and acts with authority because he is the author. Jesus is the new prophet promised by God through Moses, the new prophet raised from among the people of Israel, who would speak the actual words of God, the prophet whose words are the commands of God, the prophet to whom God told his people to listen. As the incarnate word of God, Jesus speaks the word of God. Because Jesus speaks with authority, that is, as the author, this means for us that Jesus' teachings are not multiple choice. Jesus' teachings are not a menu 
from which we may freely pick and choose. Jesus is not just one more charismatic guru who gives advice which we are free to follow or not. Jesus is not just one more teacher among many, but the teacher. Jesus teaches with authority. Jesus teaches with authority because he is the author of life, through whom everything is created. There is no higher teaching, no other teaching on par with the authoritative teaching of Jesus. And this is why, as God commanded through Moses, we must listen to him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the people he shepherds, the flock he guides, we bring our needs and the needs of the world before our Heavenly Father. For the church, that the authoritative teachings of Jesus may guide us and challenge us as we seek to live an authentically Christian life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders, elected and appointed, that they may respect and protect the sanctity of human life in all its stages of development, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all impacted by the coronavirus and for divine intervention to stop the spread of the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority in religion, government, business, or education, that they may recognize God as the source of all authority and use their influence to promote the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that every husband may lead his wife and every wife may lead her husband into holiness in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners, that during this year of the Eucharist, we, we may each grow in our devotion to the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may come into the Lord's presence with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord for all eternity, especially at this Mass. For Ryan Schrader, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions received on our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our heart.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, the rock of our salvation, be pleased to hear and answer these and all our prayers according to your gracious will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, we you death gave life to the world, and you by this, your most holy body and blood, for all my sins and for all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be saved for eternal life. It is with profound respect for the Eucharist and for your safety and well-being that we have this procedure for the reception of Holy Communion. So please follow the guidance of your seating coordinator using the blue circles in the main aisles to keep a space between you and your neighbor. As you approach, please be sure you're wearing your mask. Hold your hands open and flat and allow the host to be placed onto your palm. And then with the host on your palm, Walk to the blue square, remove your mask, consume the host, and then return to your same seat by way of the side aisles, again, always leaving space between you and your neighbor. Thank you for your cooperation, which is what makes reception of Holy Communion during this time possible.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. This Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, enjoy a 20-minute prayer experience based on Matthew Kelly's prayer process. Our website provides the Zoom link to participate. Do you have any family members or friends who are struggling with life's big questions? Invite them to a virtual video discussion series called Alpha that will take place on Wednesday evenings beginning this Wednesday, February 3rd. The online format might be just the perfect way for them to explore life, faith, and God in a comfortable setting. Invite that person to take part in Alpha this winter by giving, by giving them our parish website address, holyfamilyduxbury.org. Information and details on how to register can be found on the scrolling banner of the opening page. The person you invite might find this a life-changing opportunity. One positive thing you can do this Lent is to take part in Best Lent Ever. You'll receive a daily email and a short video to help you reconnect with yourself and God. It'll be based on Matthew Kelly's book we passed out at Christmas, I Heard God Laugh, A Practical Guide to Life's Essential Daily Habit. Whether or not you've read the book, you'll be surprised by what God can do in your life with just an email, a short video, and an open heart. You can sign up at bestlentever.com. Now that we have entered the red zone during this pandemic, we're required to take temperatures and, to, and keep contact information at all the masses. We need additional volunteers to do that, and you can help at the mass of your choice. If you can help, please contact our Director of Faith Formation, Jean Cregan. And finally, please pray for the repose of the souls of Stephen Flynn McCarthy and Sean Darlin, who both died recently. And one final bit of instruction. To exit the building, please follow the guidance of the seating uh, coordinator as we do exit mostly from the rear forward. And if you have an offering, please have it ready to drop in the offertory collection boxes located at the doors leading into the narthex. And today, um, as we anticipate the feast day for St. Blaise this week, the final blessing, um, I will impart the general blessing of throats invoking the intercession of St. Blaise. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Great. 